I keep seeing sellers hurting their chances of selling. I'm going to talk about that in the latest Home Prices and Insights for the Peel and Durham region for week ending May the 3rd, 2023. A few weeks back with our buyer clients, we went to see two properties, both on the same street. Both were fairly similar type homes. One was priced traditionally, meaning it was priced at about market value, maybe with a little bit of room to negotiate. And the other one was priced a little bit lower than market value with an offer date. Both out at the same time. We see them both. That's how I know they're both pretty similar. Well, within a couple of days, so after the weekend, the traditional priced one sold right away on the Monday. The one with the offer night had offers on Tuesday and Tuesday night, it didn't sell. It got relisted at more of a traditional price and it's two weeks later now and it's still sitting on the market. What happened? Why two similar homes, one sells right away, the other one doesn't? Well, look, they use different pricing strategies and, and there's nothing wrong with either one, but they, they really are strategies. So why don't I start there? Many sellers don't even realize that the price you pick to advertise on the MLS actually is a strategy. Which price are you choosing? It is an actual pricing strategy. It's not just price picked out of the blue. There's a reason. If, if, if it should sell, say, for 1.5, do you price it at 1.6 and have $100,000 to negotiate? Or do you price it at 1.2 with 400,000 to gain on offer night to, you know, end around 1.5, 1.6. All that's a strategy and picking the wrong strategy can really hurt your chance of success. I've worked with a lot of sellers. I'm working with sellers now. One of the, one of the, 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 the things that I look at is how's a buyer looking at this price that we're advertising. And I, I often can tell you because I work with a lot of buyers also. And from the buyers I work with, I can tell you when we've experienced this, what they're thinking. If the home is priced too high, they're thinking sellers being greedy, being unreasonable. That's what they're thinking. But, but it's okay if you maybe put the house on an offer night and it doesn't sell, we'll just cancel and relist it at a traditional price. No problem. This is what a lot of the realtors will tell you. We'll price it low, we'll do an offer night. You as the seller might say, yeah, well, what if we don't get the price we want? That's okay, we'll just put it then later at the price you want. That's fine. But let me tell you how the buyer looks at that. Especially with my buyers where we've competed on offer night and it doesn't actually sell, the buyers are thinking, why is the seller being unreasonable? And then you relist it, they're thinking, well, there must be some pressure now and they wanna to try to offer much slower than what the new list price is. This is what's on the buyer's mind and these are the things that'll hurt you. Now, I'm not saying the buyers are right in thinking those things, but this is the, the, the smudge you put on your listing, the, the maybe the if you, stigma, if you will, that you put on your listing when you don't go out at the right price the first time. Now, offer nights, look, in the Durham region, 75, 70, 75% of the properties are selling at list price or more. In Mississauga and Brampton, about half, 50% or so are selling at list price or more. So it's really easy for the realtor to think, oh yeah, lots are selling a list price or more. Let's do an offer night. It might not be the case in your neighborhood. The experience I talked about at the beginning where one house with an offer night didn't sell and is still on the market and the other one did, you take a bit of time and research the neighborhood, you'll see a lot of failed attempts on offer night of other properties. So we could use the examples of what's happening in that neighborhood to guide us on which 
pricing strategy makes sense in that neighborhood, in that pocket. It's so important to know that. It's so important to know what's working in your area, what's not. The numbers I talk about, talk about the city as a whole. When I tell you 50% in Mississauga are selling a list price or more, that's a fact. But it's not a fact for your neighborhood. That takes further research. That's where you're counting on the listing agent to really do their homework and to tell you what's going on there. And it's really interesting because you could have a listing appointment today, takes a three, four weeks for the house to get ready. Well, it could be a different scenario the day before you go out. So you got to really stay on top of that. Why do many realtors automatically choose offer nights? Why do sellers just automatically choose offer nights? Because it's cool. I'll go to a listing appointment and, and the, the, the sellers that I'm talking to will tell me, oh, the house down the street had five offers and they're like excited that people want to compete. But the price can still be the, the strategy that makes it a successful sale or not. That and how the listing is managed. So get it right the first time because if you don't, you're not looked at favorably from a buyer's perspective. Whether that's right or wrong, I got to tell you, is irrelevant. What's important is what's the buyer thinking about your price, your home. That's the most important thing. Whether it's true or not, it's the image you give across. And failed offer nights, canceled relist, don't work. It just doesn't work well in your favor. Get it right, the pricing strategy, the first time. If you think this video can help somebody you know, please pass it along. If you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, selling, buying, it's really simple. Below this video in the description, there's a link to my calendar. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you, and we'll talk about whatever's on your mind. Let's get into the numbers. Go Leafs go! Tonight is game four. I sure hope we could lift the fight another day. You know, some sellers are really hurting themselves with the pricing strategy that they use. I spoke about that before, so I'm not going to get into detail now. But it, it can really make the difference in the sale. Now, just because you sold doesn't mean it was a successful sale. And that's really what I'm getting at. Did this sell? Did you maximize all the opportunities and the pricing strategy has a lot to do with the buyers you attract, how the offers come in. It, it really is a vital, a crucial part of a successful sale. Let's get into the numbers. Here's a quick summary. Mississauga up top. Green here we have Brampton and in red we have the Durham region. Prices are up across the board. They have been increasing week after week for, for about a month straight now. We're going to start off with Mississauga. These are detached properties only for week ending May the 3rd. 59 detached properties were sold. It's actually sales have been coming down over the last couple of weeks. Not sure why. We're not expecting sales to come down, but that's what's happening. So 59 were sold. 11 of those sold at $2 million or more. So the luxury property sales are starting to increase. Average sold price is up to $1,654,000. 1654 is 10% lower than where we were this time last year. The median price of 1532 is 6% lower than where we were this time last year. But both median and average sold price pretty clear. They've been trending up, not by a little bit. It's, it's quite aggressive how quickly prices are starting to increase. And uh, what I'm looking at really is the, the dotted line, which is a four week moving average. It's, it's pretty steep. 59 we said were sold, which is more than what we were selling last year. For a few weeks now, sales are a bit higher than what they were a year ago between now and when the year started, 
many of the weeks we were way behind, much, much lower than what we we're selling last year. The last few weeks we're selling more. 46 of those 59, 46% sold at list price or more. 105 were listed in months of inventory. It did go up week over week by 0.1, but it's still, it's at one month of inventory, quite low. Overall, months of inventory has been coming down, meaning the, at the rate that we're buying, the amount of properties available for sale, they're gonna be all sold out. If nothing else changes, they'll be all sold out in one month, in four weeks. There'll be no properties left. That, that's the problem, or that's the reason prices are going up. There's just a scarcity. There's more buyers competing to buy for the few properties that are available for sale. So yes, interest rates went up. Boring costs are much higher. Cost of living is higher. Everybody's monthly expenses has gone up. Uh, affordability is lower, but it is being offset by scarcity months of inventory so low that it's offsetting the fact that affordability is so much lower, lower and prices are going up as a result. Here's Brampton, 87 properties were sold. Five of those were at $2 million or more. Average sold price climbed up to 1,306,000. 1,306,000 is only 3% lower than where we were a year ago. The median price is 4% lower, median price sitting at 1,251,000. And again, average prices and median prices trending upwards, not by a little bit, but quite steep. Of the 87 that sold, 55% of those properties sold at list price or more. So more than half in Brampton are selling that way. Here's the problem. So we see sales, little bit higher than what they were a little while ago. Listings, not much change in listings. So we're buying up the properties, but we're not replacing them really with excess listings. Months of inventory, staying low, sitting at 0 0.7. We were dropping months of inventory for a while, and now for several months it's been quite steady. And that's where you see months of inventory, or sorry, you see average sold prices going up. I've got here February 1st, average sold price was 1.2. It's now the beginning of May, so all of February, all of March, all of April, basically, three months. 106,000 is what the average, uh, average sold price increased by. Here's uh, Durham region. For Durham, I'm using Pickering, Ajax, and Whippy as my Durham sample. 70 detached properties were sold. Two of those were at $2 million or more. Average sold price, no surprise, is climbed. It's now sitting at 1,207,000. 1,207 is 3% lower than where the average price was a year ago. Median price is also 2%, it's 2% lower than where the median price was a year ago. And, and you can see here, average sold price has been climbing for the last little while. It's, it kind of seems steady, but we can see because they've been climbing up a little bit that that trajectory is going to change most likely next week. Of the 70 that sold, 76% sold at list price or more. Very, very competitive in the Durham region. We were in the 50s, then in the 60 percentile. Now 75, 74, 76% selling at list price or more. Only 87 were sold. So let me go back. Sales, you can see the, the orange. Sales has been climbing. List price, not a lot of changes. It hasn't really, we're not putting the inventory back on the shelves for more buyers to buy. So they're competing for the few properties that are out there. Months of inventory, here you go, 0 0.4. That is extremely low, an extreme seller's market. And you can see for the last four weeks, prices week after week after week, average sold price is getting a bit higher. Here's a whole different world here, Peel condos. It's a completely different world than the detached market. 53 condos were sold. None of those were sold at a million dollars or more. Average sold price came way down to 606,000. 
606 is 9% lower than where we were a year ago. The median price is 12% lower. And yes, prices have been climbing, but this week we saw a big dip. We're going to obviously keep monitoring that to see if that dip is going to continue or not. And that would change the trajectory of where prices are going. Of the 53 that sold, 38% sold at list price or more. So a little bit more than a third you're competing on. The rest, it's more traditional. You can see the price, you can negotiate, put in conditions. 112 were listed, so let me, let me go back. This is the opposite of the detached side. So sales not really increasing. Where we saw in the detached market, sales were increasing. Listings here are actually climbing a bit, where in the detached market, listings really weren't climbing that much. And that's where you get slightly higher months of inventory. Now months of inventory for condos is on the decline but still 1.3, very different than 0.4. Here's a quick summary. You got Brampton at 0 0.7, 0 0.4 for Durham, one month of inventory for Mississauga and the condos at 1.3, it's really low. Prices tend to go up when months of inventory are this low. Thanks for watching, have a great day, go Leafs go.